um, years ago, actually, I, um, I was in college and I was already getting my degree in exercise sports science. And, um, it was my last year, 2011. And, you know, I was kind of sitting there, uh, what do I want to do with this? A lot, a lot of other people were going off to physical therapy school nursing school, that kind of stuff, uh, cardiac rehab. Um, I hadn't really quite decided. And then I saw, um, it was actually on ESPN sports science. Uh, they're kind of, um, talking about different training styles and the science and philosophies of, uh, based on the type of kids they get uh, for University of Oregon versus uh, Auburn football because they were the yeah. teams playing the national title that year with Cam Newton. So that kind of – I loved working out. I loved sports. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, I, maybe I'll go into athlete training, but still not really knowing what I was going to do because mm -hmm. uh, the first main thing you think of, especially that segment, is coaching for a, a college or a pro team. Um, mm -hmm. So started looking at that. That's what I decided to do. Uh, I had an internship left over to do spring 2012 after I graduated. And um, I was able to meet my uh, mentor, uh, Sean Dassey. And he had already done uh, Division I uh, strength coaching, private performance in California. And he had actually uh, relocated into uh, my area of Texas. And so I began to do my internship under him. And, uh, I mean, that was 10 years ago and he's still a, he, I mean, he's still a mentor to me uh, this day. We actually live in the same city still, still talk back and forth. So um, uh, we kind of worked together for a little bit and then uh, we went our own directions and then uh, the corporate gym, uh, Gold's Gym didn't work out for me uh, working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. I decided um, once I left there to go on my own and uh, you know, I've been doing independently under my own name, Super Performance Training for seven years now. Good, good, good. Awesome. So for those for those watching, you do you specialize more in, in sports performance, correct? Right. Yeah. I mean in, in a nutshell, um get stronger, build muscle, um, you know, uh speed, vertical, agility, all that stuff that um away from the sports skills basically. Okay, cool. So tell us a bit about your business then. Uh, so, uh, like I said, it's been seven years since I started it, uh, mm -hmm. been on my own. Uh, I'm in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, mostly what I do is, uh, one-on-two -on -two training. Okay. And so, uh, since I get mostly volleyball and football players, then it's pretty easy to pair them up. Uh, you know, they bring teammates, siblings and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, right now I rent out of a gym, um, here in San Antonio and I share space. And so, uh, but uh, outside of the training, I also handle nutrition because I'm all about the total, uh, you know, human body performance, uh, not mm -hmm. just uh, the physical in the gym. So I handle uh, nutrition, anything from simple guidelines to, you know, not eating as much fries and candy to, um, <laughs> yeah, to, you know, game day snacks, uh, that kind of stuff through critical times of the year. And then, of, of course, like a lot of uh, coaches uh, we know, uh, mm -hmm. tapping more into the the mindset side uh you know mm -hmm. get, get the mind right and everything else will kind of follow usually yeah so how how is it working with athletes from different sports then uh it's as, as far as how is it like how difficult is it because they're different is, sports is or? it kind of different in terms of working like with a football athlete and, and a volleyball athlete uh it can be but to simplify it no matter what sport you uh, train if you're in the performance side is mm -hmm. you got to think strength is strength, power is power, jumping higher, getting faster is getting faster. Um, so I, I lay the foundation from a general athletic standpoint. Y'all don't have any sport right now. Mm -hmm. um, lay the foundation uh, the way it would be uh, if they went to college and their strength coach, you know, took a hold of them. Uh, so mm -hmm. everything is pretty simple in that way. And, and I do like to, uh, train the same sports with each other if I can, uh, you mm -hmm. know, 99% will be that way. And, um, and then as they go through the season, uh, let's like, you know, club, you know, volleyball players, they play club right over the fall. And so I will have them in that major time of the club season, uh, mm -hmm. for like, you know, seven to eight months. And so then I might get a little bit more specific, uh, to, uh, their sport, but a lot of that, uh, you know, even then 90% of the program is still going to be the foundations of athletic performance, what makes you a better athlete. Their coaches 
Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the ones they go to clinics for or their team coaches at school or in club, they're the ones who are going to take care of the more technical side. So mine is yeah. just to supplement that uh, with my training. Okay, cool. So it's actually cool. really simple, but it can be seen pretty complicated if uh, you mm -hmm. don't break it down right. Mm -hmm. So it, when you when you do workouts with with your athletes, do you focus more on like specific movements within that sport? Um, strength and conditioning, or how, how does so, that work? I mean the the strength side. Uh, even with uh, football players who are known to be just bigger and stronger than everybody else, um, I still keep it, uh, once again, very foundational. Uh, but obviously with volleyball compared to if I have an offensive lineman uh, in football, then the volleyball player will need a little bit of everything, a little bit more agility, a little bit more uh, broad jump and sprints, a little bit more vertical. Mm -hmm. The offensive lineman, he can still benefit from that, but uh, – mm -hmm it's definitely in a shorter space. So then, yeah, th then within all those, there's degrees of change uh, mm -hmm. based on what they need. But that's also why I continuously um, evaluate their agility test, um, their vertical, uh, their uh, their sprint test uh, during sessions. Okay, cool, cool, sounds good. So you've uh, been in business for, for over five years now. Mm -hmm. So tell us, talk to us a little bit, when you first started, what, what was your biggest obstacle? you faced uh biggest obstacle um well so like i said right now i rent out a facility and i wouldn't say the biggest obstacle uh in the you know in the grand scheme of things was the fact that i was training out a football field plenty of people go to the field and train um the biggest obstacle is how do you get people to notice you if you're at a field versus a public gym that always has traffic so yep. i had to figure out um who to talk to, and that's your youth coaches of different sports. Uh, other trainers, you know, like uh, guys like Ben were doing soccer training. Another guy I know uh, named Yale, he does quarterback training. Uh, getting to know other trainers who don't quite do what I do, but we can supplement what each other do mm -hmm. um, to get noticed, uh, knowing how to use social media properly. Um, a lot of my friends and family, they – on my social media, they, you know, they didn't have kids in sports yet. Now it's totally different. It's seven years later. Uh, a yeah. lot more of them do uh, to where I get my eye, uh, more eyes on me on my, on my, you know, everyday friend list. But uh, back then I, uh, I had to learn to find where that was instead of just trying to like, you know, DM and, you know, click uh, friend requests on everybody. So I, so I, I found Facebook groups uh, that actually solved a lot of the problems put me, um, in front of a lot more people in my community. So, mm -hmm. um, but through that time, uh, learning how to get more uh, money up front, mm -hmm. which is something, you know, we talk about in this program. Um, so there's, it, it always starts off sessions, okay? That's what the first thing we're ever taught is uh, sessions. So in the beginning, I was getting people who were just kind of dropping in money. Okay, there's a risk to that. Um, and then it's, the next test would be uh, either getting more per session or more sessions together. And then, uh, you know, learning later on, uh, getting more of a monthly amount, and then they kind of come up to a certain amount per month. So everything kind of progressed that way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in Texas, I would say the biggest obstacle you can't control is uh, the heat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we had over a I think we had over 100 degrees starting like in April this year. So that was pretty. So luckily I was training inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with air conditioning, I'm guessing. Right? Oh, yes. Very much. <laughs> awesome. So at the moment in your program, what's, what's the minimum commitment a client is, is making with you? Uh, the minimum is um, one time a week. And mm -hmm. I actually sell the most of those because – uh, once again, I have volleyball players. They have they go to they go to privates clinics uh, for mm -hmm. all their skills. They play for school, so they have school demands. They play for clubs. They have those nights uh, and mm -hmm. uh, weekend afternoons they have to go to. They have siblings who are in sports and other curricular activities. Mom and dad have work, so uh, the one time a week is like an extra credit tutoring, uh, you know, level that ties in everything else. So I I sell the most one time a week. Summertime, they'll usually upgrade to two to three times a week, though. So I take okay. advantage of that. 
um, you know, usually May through mid August, I uh, take advantage of them bumping up and upgrading. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them will do uh, month to month, and they'll they'll do that throughout the you know usually October or November through uh, you know mostly through mid August. I'll retain them, and then there's those people recently um, uh, in the last year. Ben taught me how to uh, get more uh, months up front. You know, mm -hmm. the, different, the different ways to do that, you know, th they save a little, you get more up front, it's secure, it's in the bag, and then you kind of move on to the next. So I get a mixture of those who pay six months up front, those who will still do month to month, but they're still with you for nine months. Yeah, yeah. So for, for maybe coaches that are watching that aren't too familiar with, say, more the performance aspects of, of sport, right? Because a lot of the, the trainers we work with are more skills development. Right. And performance goes along, like, it's it's more than just skill. Mm -hmm. So for you, what was, what's, like, one or two, um, like, problems your clients face when they come to you? Give us um, an idea. Well, just like uh, it, it's a common problem, uh, even when they hire uh, a lot of other coaches like y'all who take care of the skill side is they play for a school mainly that um, it's overcrowded. They don't get yeah. enough reps. The camps they might have gone to, not enough reps. Um, they don't have control over the, the itinerary at club practices to get more reps, more one-on-one -on -one attention uh, at times. And so for me, um, they say, okay, I need more uh, help getting faster. And you could be like, well, you just got to go to track practice and everything like that. You got to play faster, but there might be something technical they need uh, just to learn. Okay. Once again, the, just the fact that they get in front of somebody who can make it um, more personalized and biggest attention, that's what mm -hmm. they usually um, get the advantage of. So running faster, uh, they're in the weight room, but sometimes you don't always get the the best attention or most attention in the weight room either uh and if you do you uh need to learn how to do it without um you know depleting yourself for all your other um uh, hours in the week with uh mm -hmm. you know from a you know skills training club practices and all that mm -hmm. so that's the biggest so, problem is learn how to work hard and smart basically yeah 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 so in terms of like the, the nutrition side this yeah. is something that, that that interests me as well right how do you as, as a coach, keep your clients accountable to their nutrition? Uh, first, every time they come in, I'm always going to ask what they've been having for lunch and dinner that week. That's a very uh, very simple, easygoing conversation. Um, you know, a lot of them know that they, they, they don't always have the best options at schools. Uh, sometimes they have very good options. And so... Um, so nutrition, I'm always quizzing them uh, when they come in, uh, what everything looks like. I do have group texts with parents. Uh, they send uh, photos of uh, what snacks are doing in between school practices and training. Uh, they always ask me questions on what they can do, uh, especially when you're on a time crunch going from point A to point B all the time. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that, that's ba the, the most basics of that. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, keeping them accountable is just always asking questions like what have you been doing uh keeping an open door for the parents uh ask him how it's going um and then I'll, you know when they bring the problems up of why accountability is hard then you know then you try to once again like we always do create solutions for that all right yeah like that so where do you see the sports performance industry going in the in the next two to five years it's going right up with the rest of the youth sports industry <laughs> it's uh yeah. it, we're we're um i don't know if this ties into a, a next question or not uh but initially when i read the questions i said it's probably gonna double you know in the next three to five years and that was just a very honest answer but then i decided well i haven't googled this in a while let me look up where youth sports is going and i know in the united states they said in 2010 2017 um it went up 55% to like $19 billion youth sports industry. That's just playing sports. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and so automatically with y'all who do baseball, basketball, uh, sports performance and all that on the side, we, we piggyback with that. Okay. That's not yeah. even including us, I think. Um, and so I was mm -hmm. like, okay, we're going to double that. But I kept reading uh, some research that even, even though there was a slight dip in 
2021 during COVID uh, with some uncertainties in different areas of the world um, and the United States that uh, they still project based on research groups that and by 2026, it'll hit about $70 billion in the United States. So, oh, wow. so sports performance is just going to go right up with that. Uh, that's yeah. like, I, I don't, I don't have an exact number, but I know if that's going up and with my experience, it's just going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, I completely agree. Like every single day, every single week, you see more and more coaches entering this, this, this industry, mm -hmm. this niche and hundred percent. Like, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm in the UK um, right. and I'd say we are, we're about five years behind the US in terms of like private training. Okay. Um, but once we've caught up in terms of private training, I can definitely see a lot more parents investing into the, the stuff that you do with the right. performance aspect. Um, now with a lot of kids being, um, well, on their tablets a lot, uh, sitting down for a lot of, mo well, most of the week, I can see a lot more parents now maybe looking at other alternatives, options to get their kids right. more active, more stronger. Um, not just the physical side, right? The mental side as well. Right. Something you touched on. So 100% agree with you. I think it's definitely going to continue to grow. And hopefully the UK will, will at some point catch up. So, oh, yeah, I'm sure. Perfect. So you've, you've been working with Ben. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about how your business has changed since since you started working with Ben. Yeah. Uh, so even so, I, I was uh, when I first met Ben, I was slowly getting smarter. While after a year in the gym, uh, my name had already built up. So getting people in the door um, because of some momentum. The first two years, athletes did really well. Parents uh, loved my training. That wasn't as hard. Um, getting smarter at how I took payments to, to where I'm not just like chasing after checks and credit cards, um, mm -hmm. not having to do as much accounting work. Um, that's where Ben came in handy. Uh, so it was, okay, here's uh, session packages. And then it was, okay, here's at least getting uh, automatic payments every two weeks, four weeks, that kind of stuff is what he did. And so, so, so a lot of times I would sell, um, Okay, here's a package for one time a week, but you know he taught me a lot of the words is, don't say sessions. You do a whole monthly program at least. It's monthly training. You give homework, you give nutrition advice, uh, an accountability service. Sell it as monthly coaching. They're paying for uh, at least month to month. You just so happen to get one time a week or two times a week. Yeah. Okay, so you kind of flip the the words and the model around a little bit. So that, that was a big changer right there. Um, getting things once again automatically uh, charging no matter how often you get them charged getting it automatically charged to where you don't have to remind about checkbooks uh, cash uh, credit cards everything's a lot more organized and uh, once it's automatic it's more organized going straight to your bank you don't have to worry about it the only thing you worry about is a few card declines but people's cards stay uh, pretty active at, what, every three to four years so that's mm -hmm. not a huge issue right there yeah um, so that's been the biggest thing is once you're not worried about um, you know, working with Ben, once you're not worried about people always having the money at the right time to repay you every time, mm -hmm. then you can focus on uh, training smarter, improving coaching services outside the sessions, um, mm -hmm. marketing to take on more people. Okay. Yeah. So you, you can just go back to what you love doing. You don't have to, you know, be a money chaser anymore. And then people stay committed longer because one less thing to worry about. Yes, yes, completely agree. So tell us a little bit. So what what's been your best month since working since working with Ben and being part of our program? Now you don't have to say financially what was the best month, but in terms of like adding clients and your your business growing. Mm -hmm. Um. So the first couple of years uh, working with Ben, there was always uh, my goal was to, you're always going to have some kind of slow month. My goal was to never have as slow as the other, uh, yeah. like, you know, the year before. So I always try to go up a percentage, even if it's going to be slower, it's not as slow. So um, summers were getting busier. And then I would say this past year, um, a lot of things I did on my end. And then, you know, luckily other things that other trainers in my area weren't doing correctly benefited me that, 
um, I would say this whole entire year has just been really awesome. It went from usually beginning of the year, uh, uh, you know, I got like 20, uh, 20 sessions, one or two kids per session. I was hitting like 40 hours a week, uh, a lot faster than before. And wow. so when I went into the summer, it was, uh, I had, you know, 80% of the kids that I needed already uh, to be ready for the summer. And then it was just a matter of, can I fit more kids in? Where can I fit them in? Uh, and, mm -hmm. and next thing you know, in the summertime, when I'm already busy, um, I was hitting like, even with two kids per hour maxed out in my gym, I was hitting 55 hours in four and a half days. Wow. So, and, and my problem before with, when I worked with Ben was I was only selling one-on-one -on -one and I got so busy and I was like, man, I'm doing the same football players, the same volleyball players. Like I don't need one-on-one -on -one attention. I can cut that price down a little bit, still make my money, still get all the kids in that I want, all the traffic coming in. Mm -hmm. And I remember the, after I took his first time taking his advice, I went from 55 hours a week, uh, one, mostly one-on-one -on -one, to the next year I made the same amount of money, but that summer it was only, um, that summer I only did uh, 35 hours a week, but I was making the same amount of money. So it was awesome. I had more free time, more energy, more enjoyment. Uh, but now I've hit a ceiling where um, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. I just have a lot more demand. So this whole year has been like, you know, a, a floodgate. Mm -hmm. So you made a great point. So a lot of coaches think that in order to make more money, they, they need to work more. So right. how you were doing 55 se sessions per week, Mm -hmm. and then you went to 35 but you were making the same amount of money doing less hours how how does that happen so any coach watching or listening tell us how does that happen um so i mean you get two kids per hour and mm -hmm. if those two kids added up exceed how much your one-on-one -on -one was tra trained before then um you know you you make more per hour and you have one more kid than usual and so um you don't always have two kids per session, but um, when you get busy enough, you will. Um, you'll force it into that way when you have control of your business like uh, that you've been had taught us. So, uh, it, you know, everybody has their own balance. Uh, some of y'all, uh, some of y'all's coaches have, you know, groups of six to eight, but they've realized that same balance. You know, they can make two to three hundred dollars a day do, uh, doing that at least versus trying to get more one-on-one -on -one clients. And then the retention is also a lot bigger when we find that healthy balance that we want. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So tell us a bit about your, your current sales process then. How do you sell and, and market your business? Where are your clients coming from? Uh, so a lot of, uh, once again, word of mouth from current parents and athletes that I have. Uh, I've been getting closer to a lot of their, uh, you know, the volleyball coaches, their club coaches, uh, mm -hmm. football coaches for my other guys at school. Uh, some of them um, I grew up, uh, some of their coaches I grew up with and have known for years. So I get a lot of uh, word of mouth referrals uh, between that, you know, very organic. And then, mm -hmm. like I said, I stumbled onto some uh, community uh, faith, uh, Facebook pages. And, and one that worked really out for me was just for, uh, the one that I used for years was, uh, was all youth sports, but it was mainly football dads uh, and parents mm -hmm. in there overall. Uh, this other one was purely just, uh, and it helped me a lot this year, was just volleyball parents in my city. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they are very good about, uh, they're like actually some of the best networking at. If you want to sell volleyball skills, they will tag you 10 times in a row. Like they are that <laughs> good at referral networking, tagging trainers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I found a lot on there. Uh, and then some people will find through the website also. Um, I yeah. will get I will get people who will always Google search. And I guess I've been searched enough to where it's kind of popped up enough um, mm -hmm. on there. And so usually, uh, depending on how they find me, some will message me through social media. Some will uh, email me, uh, depending mm -hmm. on where they found me. Mm -hmm. And so what Ben has always taught us, and I've done, I've mastered a lot more is, always push to get their phone number, email, and okay. find a day and time to call. Uh, if you just message them, you respond right away, hey, this is my prices, that's it. It's yeah. a 50-50 chance. So get them on a call. Uh, sometimes, you know, get them on a call or get them in person meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's so that's my process. Um, and then, you know, working with Ben, getting more structured with your, uh, your interview questions with them. Um, 
get to know the parents' name, the kids' name, what club they play for, positions, uh, schools they attend or will attend, their needs, mm -hmm. um, relating it to other kids that you train and their problems and how you solved it and just showing you understand all that mm -hmm. and this is how your program can solve it. Mm -hmm. But also show an understanding that, hey, your kid is a little different. Here's what we'll look into to changing things up. That way, no matter if you train one-on-one, one-on-two, one on two, one on eight, they always mm -hmm. feel like it's, it, it can be personalized to them. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing. And then, uh, you know, from there, it, just like uh, you have been have taught for over the years is mm -hmm. that alone will help you uh, send them a link and then sell on the phone, basically. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So are you currently doing this full time? Yes. I've been doing it full time for seven years. Good. Good. So for anyone watching, uh, how do you get into training or how do you turn this, this business from part time to, to a full time business? What, what do you need? Uh, because it's not just about business, right? You've got to be also disciplined in your personal life. As right. Well. So talk to us a little bit. How, how do you go about the Starting it maybe as a hobby, turning it into a part-time thing, and then going full in and doing it for a living. Yeah, I mean, I would say even if your goal is to, let's say you have an eight-to-five job and you just want to do it for uh, an hour a day after you get out of your main job and you love it, uh, maybe one day you want to get into it full-time. I would say even if you're only going to do 10 sessions a week to start off part-time or you want to jump into 40, like you said, you got to make your, uh, your lifestyle has to be a certain way. Um, that's being more serious, uh, with everything, uh, the, the seriousness, uh, that you would want your athletes to have, you need to have also, um, mm -hmm. taking care of everything else in life, um, outside. So that way it doesn't interfere, always looking to be more than on time, being a great communicator, um, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the schedule, uh, each week is big. Um, even if it's a hobby, like if you want to be taking it seriously, like it may be 10 hours a week, then you have to train serious. You have to, uh, pretend like, you know, you're going to do this to be the number one person in your area. Okay. Don't, don't treat it like a, ah, it's extra money. You know, let's kind of goof off and everything. And, you know, I hope they like me and everything like go in it, like, you're going to make this your full-time income tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Me, my goal was always to make training my full-time income. Uh, I just had to get better at sales. Uh, and then I started taking more advantage of my free time. Every time I go to the gym, the last five of seven years, I always bring my backpack, uh, note spiral, a uh, couple of books to read, but then also my laptop. I'm mm -hmm. always, there's always something you can do on your free time. Uh, that revolves around uh, talking to clients, finding uh, finding more clients, uh, improving your uh, your training program and everything like that. You have to improve every other area, get serious. You can't just, even if it is a hobby, you don't want to treat it like a hobby or it's going to end like most hobbies very soon. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. That's good. So how, how, do you, how do you balance like work and life? Um, it, you know, or is there well, no balance? No, there's a balance, but it looks different, uh, person to person. And it's going to look different, uh, over the year. Um, mm -hmm. you know, summertime, uh, kids are not in school. You're going to be working a lot more if you want to. And, uh, and so, you know, for one thing, going back to communication, if you have a significant other and other family members that you have share a life with communicating how things will look in the busiest times, how you project them based on the amount of calls and emails you get. The better you do that, the better y'all can solve as a unit. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and then you got to establish uh, what hours you want to work in person with athletes, what hours you do or you don't want to take phone calls, respond to emails. Uh, that's, a, that, that's the hardest part for all of us is getting off our phone and responding because in the beginning, we're, we're very ambitious, but we also feel like, if I don't respond to this person right now, 10 p.m. on a Friday, I will not make the sale. Yes. That's not always true. <laughs> That's not yeah. always true. Like they're no. sometimes they do that 10 p.m. on a Friday because they're bored. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> Agree. Uh, yeah. So yeah. 
it, it takes just like with athletes getting better. It takes practice. It takes reps to yeah. slowly change one thing at a time. Uh, so don't try to rush into it and make sure it's perfect because it won't be perfect. But do try to put on a slow, gradual efforts and everything. Do communicate with everybody in your life on how things are going, what you foresee. Um, you know, if you have kids, uh, it'll be a problem that I have later on is how will we manage uh, who takes the kids to school or daycare, who picks them up, who takes them to their sports. That's probably my biggest nightmare later on. It's a problem that I'm going to enjoy having is who's going to be taking my kids to sports? Am I going to have to, like, you know, why be ready to step back some days to take them there? Um, you know, all that stuff. Because um, I will have to tap into my kids the same way parents mm -hmm. tap into theirs. I can't be saying, well, no, like, you're going to figure that out. I, I, I want to be at their games, but I at least want to be at one practice a week, you know. I yes. do want I, I to be able to go and just be dead. So, yeah, yeah, so, I agree. Uh, and, and a lot of that, I would say, um, if you know trainers in your area that have mastered it, have an honest conversation with them, and they will open up about it for like several hours. Talk to the parents of the kids you train because they are doing it right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> like mm -hmm. they are, they are doing it right now every single day. And if you want to learn from somebody, learn from those who are already doing it and understand you, and they yeah. have the same goals and intentions that you do. Yeah, yeah, couldn't agree more. So, Jim, tell us where where do you see your your business in the next five years from now? Uh, so right now I am gonna be uh, I'm in the process with a business partner actually looking to open up my own uh, training studio uh, in 2023. So by doing that, uh, my one on two, where most kids are doing one time a week or sometimes two times a week. Uh, three in the summers, uh, you know, for a short time. Uh, we will keep the prices around the same, but because it's a group and we have more eyes and we can deliver a, uh, a better experience with more kids at once, um, the prices will be the same, but uh, we'll be offering to where they can come in automatically three to four times a week in a group. Yeah. And so, uh, so that's my thing. Uh, the amount an athlete pays will be about the same, give or take, but they have the chance to come in more times in a month that opens up. So that is going to be great. Uh, still deliver personalized attention and care. Uh, that's going to be the big focus while still being in a group. And my business partner uh, has awesome skills at that because he's worked at the collegiate level, strength conditioning. He's worked for a high school where he had to look over 100 football players, but then there was the, the school coaches who didn't know how to coach as well as him for the weight room. And he had to make sure that they were doing a good job also. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where if he can do that and I had the personalization skills, we can build that together. Then, you know, one on 12, two on 15 or 20 is, is a, you know, it's easy. Yes. Uh, so, yes. so my thing is, is going to be moving into uh, adding in those uh, small groups to where, um, you know, right now my ceiling uh, at the 55 hours and four and a half days, I was, mm -hmm. my ceiling was at two kids per hour, however many hours I could allow myself to work. Now that ceiling's more open because even if I only get four kids per hour, that's still mm -hmm. double. Yeah. Right? That's still double. Um, everything is only increased. We're not, I'm not as fatigued. Um, mm -hmm. So there is, you know, it does become my own baby, but mm -hmm. uh, the ceiling is higher because I can double every hour at minimum. I can probably Correct. triple uh, two of those hours after school. And then yeah. the summertime, we can run stuff even bigger and stronger. So that's yeah. where I see uh, the next three to five years and hopefully longer uh, running that. And tied into that will be a lot of stuff that Ben has helped other coaches with, um, with bigger camps, whether that's something you want to do on a regular basis or just mm -hmm. something to – uh, give back to like you know a three-hour experience to everybody and you have other coaches kind of come in mm -hmm. uh, plenty of other guys like ben they do soccer uh they do football maybe i do my speed and agility thing and then they do a big uh, a big camp on the side or uh, those guys are already doing something and their athletes pay for just an extra 45 minutes on a saturday Mm -hmm. and uh, that gets us uh, the parents' information to see what we're about. We get to talk to them while they work mm -hmm. with the other coach they know. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's probably where the next three to five years is, just to be bigger, and then, you know, hire some coaches underneath us. 
Good. Awesome. All right, Jim. Well, thank you for, for coming on here, uh, yeah. sharing, sharing your journey, sharing your story with us. Uh, would love to, to bring you on in 12 months from now, see yes. uh, where you are, uh, and hopefully your business uh, looks a lot different in a good way mm -hmm. in 12 months from now. Yeah, I'd love to come back. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for coming on and look to connect with you in the near future. All right. Thank you. Talk again. See you.